Article 20, shall the Town of Hampton vote to amend the non-lapsing Article 16 that was passed at the 2014 Annual Town Meeting for the purpose of replacing the outfall culvert located below the Grist Mill Dam on High Street to raise and appropriate an additional $147,500 for that purpose to remove the contingency as to offsetting revenues in the 2014 Article 16 and to change the purpose of that 2014 article to read as follows, for the purpose of replacing the outfall culvert located below the Grist Mill Dam on a High Street to prevent flooding of High Street and to perform a drainage study of Meadow Pond and to assist in obtaining state and federal funding for three projects and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend for such purpose any funds from the State of New Hampshire, the federal government, and any private sources may become available. Note that $235,000 has already been raised from taxes to complete this project. And to raise and appropriate the sum of $147,500, that was originally provided by the state, which is no longer available, to fund said sum with a sum of $73,750, half of the sum of $147,500, to come from the unassigned fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31, 2015 and the sum of $73,750, half of the sum of $147,500, will be raised from taxation from the non-lapsing, will be raised from taxation. The non-lapsing deadline in the original article remains the same. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6, and will not lapse until the replacement of the culvert and the performance of the drainage study are completed or by March 31st, 2018, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4 to 1, not recommended by the Budget Committee 6 to 7 to 1. Fiscal impact note, Finance Department, the estimated 2016 tax impact on $73,750 is 2.6 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 20? Recognize Mr. Waddell. I have a second, seconded by Mr. Bridal. Mr. Waddell, do you wish to speak? I, may, to? I, make a, I hereby move to amend. Warren Article 20 by striking out the current language without changing the fiscal impact note and by replacing it with the following language. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $147,500 for the purpose of replacing the outfall culvert below the Grist Mill Dam on High Street and to perform a drainage study of Meadow Pond and to fund such appropriation the sum of $73,750 to come from the unassigned fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31, 2015, and the sum of $73,750 to be raised by taxation. Majority vote uh, required. Uh, note, in 2014, the town appropriated $235,000 for this purpose, which was to be supplemented by $147,500 from the state of New Hampshire if the dam was breached. In March of 2015, the town voted not to breach the dam, but to rebuild it, reversing its prior vote. The state withdrew its assistance of 147500 to replace the culvert and to do the study. The article will fund the remaining appropriation of 147500 needed to complete the work. If the article does not pass, the previously raised amount will be surrendered to surplus and the project canceled. Sir, second to Mr. Waddell's uh, amendment, Mr. Bridal. Mr. Waddell, would you like to speak to your amendment? I believe that that was, uh, the language was changed simply by the uh, DRA. Do you wish to speak beyond that to the article? And the or uh, attorney can. Or yes. uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, this and uh, one other article uh, drew some attention at the Department of Revenue Administration. And while the department does not uh, approve article language, it does uh, at times uh, suge make suggestions for wording changes. Uh, this, of course, is an article that uh, relates back to a former article, and uh, there was extensive discussion in this new language uh, is uh, as suggested by the Department of Revenue Administration. And Mr. Welch uh, can speak to uh, how this interrelates to the prior article. Mr. Mr. Moderator, yes. <clears throat> the prior article uh, did, as was illustrated in the first amendment, the first motion, uh, did provide for the replacement of this culvert because the dam was going to be breached. And of course, the town subsequently voted to change that. Unfortunately, the Department of Revenue had us raise the $235,000 in the contingency article of the previous year, and that money is there until 2018. 
the effort here is to find out if the town really wants to proceed with this work. If it does not, then we want to avoid the $235,000 and return that money to surplus so that it will be used to defer taxes. So before I get to um, the audience, are we raising an additional 147500 to put on top of that 235 Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Who wishes to be heard on Article on the Waddell Amendment? This is on the Waddell Amendment. Mr. Jones. Mr. Moderator, I just wanted to confirm that you've considered whether or not this is to be a substantial change to the original Warren article. Um, I am, have accepted the amendment, I think. Um, as I read it, Article 20 in its original formation was rather tortured in its language, and um, I think the effort has been made um, in the amendment to, to make that language clearer with the same direction. I agree in the effort, but whether the substance has been changed is kind of questionable in my mind. Uh, and I don't have a specific point to make on that. I was just hoping that, that you would give some consideration to that. Yeah, I had uh, I'd seen this amendment in advance of today's meeting, and uh, okay. I believe we're still talking about work on that Chris Mill Dam, and that's the subject matter, and that's where we still are uh, if the if the Waddell amendment is approved. Okay, uh, and I understood the uh, one of the speakers up there referring to the DRA, and I understood that this is not the language of the DRA, but uh, language developed by someone in town. In consultation with the DRA, do I have that accurate? That's my understanding how this board works and, and many uh, boards. Not to say there's anything wrong with it, just right, to be sure right. where the language came from. Yeah, I think from. they run it by the DRA to make sure because um, my experience has been if you have language that they don't like, you can sure. vote it in and they right. then won't recognize it and the, the purpose of the, uh, the town will be thwarted. Fully understandable. Yeah. I hope we can get that whole article up so I can see it at once, but uh, I think the, uh, the notation that's there. Uh, seems to be uh, at odds with the article above it, the paragraph above it, in terms of using different wordage. And it's also historically accurate. Um, the Warren article it refers to in the note, for example, in 2014, does not use the word breached. It uses the word decommissioned. And I might note that that Warren article in 2014 that it's referring to was passed by the voters by 72.5%. And it was contingent on and claimed itself to be essentially nullified if the grant was not forthcoming. And this Warren article is apparently trying to take something out of a state of nullity, which doesn't seem to be a lot of sense to me. Waiting for the language of the amended version so that we can vote on accepting the amendment. I think that language is up right now. Okay. I don't know whether the font can be but, reduced but a little do we bit need, so that you... do we need to actually vote to accept the amended version? No, we're going, to, we're going to have a vote on that after we have discussion. We're discussing the amendment right now. Oh. And then we're going, to, we're going to take a vote to see if the body wants to amend Article 20, as okay. uh, Selectman Waddell has suggested. Because I have comments to make if the amended version is accepted. All right. Well... Uh, Mr. Jones has got the floor, and uh, I think that's a little easier to, to see. Um, but my ruling is we're talking about work on the grist mill, so I consider the amendment to be appropriate. Your point is the earlier money was different? Well, I'm speaking to the wording of the amendment, which yeah. I believe is the topic at hand. And uh, it is historically inaccurate. inaccurate and when it calls for breach, it actually that Warren article referred to decommissioning, not breaching the dam. It may be the same thing in some people's minds, but I don't see why we cannot use the same word that was used in the original Warren article when we're referring to the original Warren article. Okay. So I'm going to do this because I want to take one amendment at a time. Well, that was just the first discussed. sentence in the notation. So, the second sentence has a similar issue uh, in that um, uh, it, it refers to the word breach again. The town voted not to breach the dam. It means not to... It, it voted, it didn't vote to not do something, it voted to rebuild the dam yeah. by six votes, 0.12% okay. over a majority versus the 72.5% to decommission. Okay. So in any case, these things are skewing history at best and just historically wrong in some instances. If I could get that screen to scroll a little bit further, uh, I have additional problems in here. Uh, and, and it says in the last sentence, 
uh, if this article does not pass, the previously raised amount will be surrendered to surplus. Well, I thought we were educated this year. There's no such legal language as surplus. It's actually the unassigned fund balance. Okay. So and also that last phrase, and the project will be canceled. Well, that's not true. The only thing that would be canceled would be the fund using this as a funding mechanism for the project. It doesn't mean we couldn't vote to have a project done by some other means. Okay. So it's completely distorted in terms of how the viewer will read it. Okay. These are just some of the problems I have with the amendment beyond my still question about whether there's a substantive change here from the original okay. Warren article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. All right. So Mr. Jones takes issue with a number of points of, uh, uh, laid out in the amendment. Uh, is there anybody who wishes to speak to the Waddell Amendment, then we're going to have a vote on the Waddell Amendment. Um, Mr. Pierce, no? Sir? Do you want to speak to the Waddell Amendment? Okay, all right. So I don't think we have any more discussion uh, on the amendment unless Mr. Waddell wants to. No? All right. So we've got a, uh, an amendment on the floor, and we, you, you heard me read Article 20, um, and that's been. Um, uh, Mr. Bedell would like to replace the Article 20 that I read with the Article 20 that he read. And all those in favor of the Waddell Amendment and taking the Waddell language, please raise your voter cards. Down cards. All opposed. All right. So I declare that the Waddell Amendment has passed. We're still on Article 20, but it is now as amended. We've got the new language that's up on... Um, the screen. And do we have any? Mr. Pierce, would you like to speak to the Article 20 as amended? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, in the beginning, as this article states, it was voted to decommission the dam in 2014. And there was an overwhelming vote to do that. So <clears throat> for some unknown reason, which is not explainable in any of the legislative bo body of the voters, it was not done. The, the selectman and the town manager can ask that, answer that question. But back to this, this is such a mess. It's a, a, a potpourri of kludges trying to resurrect some money that should have been returned to the taxpayers to start with, and it's a mess. And the biggest problem is we don't know what we're going to do with the dam based on the lack of action by the <clears throat> governing body, et cetera. So if we don't know what we're going to do with the dam, how can we decide what to do downstream from a dam or no dam? It's like getting the cart before the horse. This reason for doing the, the culvert in the beginning was if we decommissioned the dam, there was a the potential of a lot of water flowing through because it would not be controlled. Now, being as we don't know what we're going to do, we shouldn't be spending money on something that allows for something that may happen someday, maybe. I mean, this has been going on for two or three years. We can't seem to make up our mind which way we're doing it due to one reason or another. So I'm adamantly opposed to this article, not because the culvert needs to be replaced. It doesn't as it is right now. It's worked fine for many years. The water's only gone over it one time that I know of in recent history, and that was back about seven or eight years ago when we had that one in a hundred years rainfall that flooded almost everybody's basement in Hampton. And it was just across the top and we survived. So I'm adamantly opposed to this for a multitude of reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Uh, before I go to the next speaker, I'd just like to reach out to Mr. Welch. If this article were to pass, the amended article, um, as I understand it, some 382, 385 approximately, $385,000 would be available to do what? Just in simplistic terms, what would Article 20 as amended do if it were passed? If it were passed, Mr. Moderator, the funds that were made available through this, this motion and, and the approval would in fact replace the culvert under High Street with one that is uh, hydraulically um, in conformance with the engineer's estimates, and it would uh, complete a study, a drainage study of um, Meadow Pond. Okay. Our next, yes, sir.
Yes, my name is uh, Don Tilbury. I live on 15 Bride Hill Drive. And uh, my point tonight really is brought up because of all of these projects that are going on. And I'm going to bring up that been a project out on Bride Hill Drive that had been ignored for 20 years, more than 20 years, and that's a flooding situation. So I brought it up with the Public Works Department and uh, Mr. Welch, and nothing's been done. And that's the only reason I bring it up, to make it public. I'll be talking to them more later. Thank you, Mr. Tilbury. Before I get to Mr. Jones, who's spoken on this article. No, I spoke on the amendment. Spoke on the amendment? You're correct. Come on up. Then Ms. Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I also do not support this Warren article. However, I do see opportunities to make it better. And so, therefore, I move that we strike the last four words in the notation, those words being, and the project canceled. Can I get a second? There's no reason this project needs to be canceled. This is one article doesn't pass. Thank you. Second, Ms. Latimer. Okay, so now what I'm going to ask you to do with Mr. Kilroy's help is I'm going to get you just to write strike you know, the last strike words. Those, like, last words out. We've got a second. Uh, can, you, can you give Mr. Uh, Is done speaking. Okay. Are you? <laughs> All right. The the Jones Amendment has been made and seconded, so confine your remarks just to why you want those last four, yes, four uh, words removed. There is no reason to be conveying to the voter that if he doesn't pass this Warren article, the project will be canceled. As I said earlier, I don't support the Warren article. I do support the need to do the work. This is not the right mechanism to do it. But we can improve the mechanism. We can certainly improve the message we're giving the voters. The project will not necessarily be canceled if this Warren article fails and it shouldn't be conveyed to the voters as, as, as a cancellation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Anyone else wishing to, Ms. Myers, do you want to speak to the amendment? The Jones Amendment, just the four words staying in or coming out? Okay, all right. Uh, Ms. Woolsey, did you want to speak to the Jones Amendment? No, not to the amendment. Okay, anyone else up here wanting to be heard on the Jones Amendment? Anyone in the audience on the Jones Amendment? We're going to have a vote on the Jones Amendment. If you're in favor of the Jones Amendment, raise your photo cards. That means striking that language, those four words. Down cards. All opposed. All right, the Jones Amendment has failed. We're back to the language provided by Mr. Waddell and Ms. Barnes, if you'd like to speak to Article 20. Regina Barnes, 95 Presidential Circle, which is directly off one Conant, which runs parallel to High Street. And it apparently in 2014, we appropriated $235,000 for this project. I believe the project is necessary because High Street does flood and the culvert does need to be replaced. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Uh, Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, Jerry Zanoy, 16th Presidential Circle. I'll try to be brief here. The 2014 article called for $235,000, 147.5 were to be supposed, supplied by the state with a grant. The tax impact indicated uh, to the taxpayer was only the uh, 87,500. That was the tax impact of the 2014 article. Your tax impact would be only eight, for 87,500. Come to find out, the whole 235 was taken and taxed the taxpayer and put now in the available column on the budget. Now they're asking for another 147 because they didn't get the grant because the, because the dam wasn't decommissioned. Bringing the total of 382 or thereabouts. Nowhere have I seen anybody cost these things out. 
The Stevens report was a very thorough engineering report about this gristmill dam and the culvert and all the drainage into the dam, uh, the water behind the dam. It indicated, and I quote it from page six, on a 50 year storm, you might have 0.1 inches over the top of High Street. On a 100 year storm, you might have 0.3 <coughs> inches over the top of High Street, page six. It indicated to fix the culvert, it would be minimum, uh, maybe around 300,000. We don't know where we are with the cost of this thing. We don't even know if it's needed. The dam has to be first, and then we can evaluate it. How that 235 was taken when the taxpayer said 87.5 is all you would be impacted with is beyond me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Zanoy. Mr. Nichols? Uh, I'll wait. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jacobs? Thank you. The project has several aspects. Um, I know the way it's written, and, and I think from a lot of people, they think it's strictly tied to the grist mill or in the, in, the, in the dam behind the grist mill. It is not. I got here four and a half years ago. One of the things that got handed to me was a drainage report that was done in 1988 by a consultant that identified the top 10 projects around the town that needed to get done. Only one of them had gotten done. That was the bridge at High Street because the storm had blown it out. I got the second project done that was on the list uh, because the town had appropriated uh, money for the Mills uh, Road drainage improvement project. Culver got lowered, a pump station got put in. I think people on Tuck and Cogger now benefit from dry basements due to that project. This project is also on the 1988 list. The two culverts that are, and I don't know if you can bring up the PowerPoint page, but the two culverts that are in, in on that bridge um, were actually slipped inside of a much larger culvert. Prior, to, you see the stone face work, but if you were to take the stone face work or go look on the other side, there's actually two box culverts that are in there. Because of the funding that they may have had at that time, I, I'm not sure what the condition was, um, a, a shorter or a less costly repair was, they just slipped those two t culverts in and built up a head wall. There actually was at one time a real bridge there that had an open span. This um, finding was done in a number of locations around town. Another one is over on Park Ave. Um, those two culverts are hydraulically undersized for the flow that could pass over this road. Case in point was the, the flood of 2000, Mother's Day floods of 2000, back in 2006. So the question before you is, are we gonna wait for another Mother's Day type flood or are we gonna rectify what is currently a drainage problem with or without Mill Pond Dam? And the, so also be clear, we are moving forward with Mill Pond Dam. Uh, on February 3rd, there's five of us sitting down to interview four uh, engineers, uh, consulting engineers that have given us uh, qualification statements to proceed with the final uh, dam reconstruction. So we are moving forward on that project. The other component to the money that's being asked for is a drainage study for Meadow Pond. When that bridge was put in on High Street, we're not sure if it was put in too high or if it changed the hydraulics of Meadow Pond, but the people on between where the dam is and, and Ocean Boulevard, you, you know where I'm talking about those culverts or uh, those condos that are on the, let's see, they'd be on the north side of High Street. That area regularly floods. So the drainage analysis that we're asking as part of this funding is attempting to correct that problem, show us how to correct that problem. Also the people on Green Street, uh, Gation, um, I regularly get complaints from them that they have water in their yards. Um, they've called, they've gone even as far as called the EPA. So part, part of this money is to resolve those issues also because hydraulically they're all interrelated. So um, I'd ask for your support of this project that would help guide us, the department, the Board of Selectmen, how to make other improvements in that watershed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Nichols. <clears throat> 
Dick Nichols, 9 Great Floors, Head Avenue. First, a, a question. I'd like to confirm that 235000 um, was raised through taxation in the 2014 Article 16. Mr. Welch, can you confirm that? I can confirm that the Department of Rates. Okay. Yes. My next question is, oftentimes these type of things go to legislative intent and I look at what the legislative intent um, probably was on the 2014 article. The fiscal impact note states the estimated net cost of 87,500 results in a 2014 tax impact of 3.2 cents. 3.2 cents is a result of, of dividing 87,500 by a taxable valuation of about 2.7 billion. Therefore, it appears to me and this is much broader than just this article, that somebody has decided that fiscal impact notes are non-binding. <laughs> and I, I think that's a very serious issue that you can tell the voters it's going to cost them one thing and then tax them for amount, an amount that's almost three times yep. the amount and not small money. I wouldn't be up here if it was $1,000 on five grand. Um, so, so those are my first comments. I don't... I, I just don't believe, based on, on the statutes and the vote that took place on Article 5 in 2013, that, that um, fiscal impact notes are non-binding, and I don't believe that, despite what DRA said, um, <clears throat> that, that $235,000 was the legislative intent of the voters. Beyond that, if you look at the RSA on DRA municipal services, they are in the position of providing non-binding technical advice, okay? And this type of thing, based on that statute and a discussion that took place with Steve Hamilton this week, they do not have the authority to tell you. They can only recommend in this area is my understanding. Beyond that, this started out late in 2013, leading into the 2014 warrant, at a cost of 125000 estimated by the former DPW director based on a similar project in, in Exeter with the assurance that we would end up with something in the range of 75% covered by grants which the state of New Hampshire DES would assist us with, thus a net cost of about 31000 The DPW director had second thoughts. He got an engineer, Alex, Alex Ross, to look into it. Alex Ross came back with an estimate of 175000 and to be honest with you, I don't remember, but ultimately, as you saw, it went through at $235,000. Um, what we now have is, is all on the backs of the taxpayers, a total cost of $382,000. It, it's just not making a lot of sense on, on so many different levels. I, I think that the the, the proper approach to this is, is to just, you know, and, and I'm not having any issue with what the DPW director said. I think there are two problems that, that need to be fixed. I think one problem is the technical problem associated with the capacity of the culvert to deal with flow rates. I think, I think we also need at this deliberative session to, to fix the second problem is, is the manner in which we appropriate money, and I think we need to stick um, to the, the, in view, the fiscal impact notes is binding. Thank you. Get your card. You dropped your, your voter card. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let me, uh, I, I'll let you have a moment, Mr. Gerald. I really don't want to debate a fiscal impact note from a prior year and how the town might have felt that what they listed was appropriate, but then DRA made you raise more money, so it, you know, I just don't want to go there. I don't, I don't, I don't think it really, uh, I understand Mr. Nichols' concern, and I don't diminish Mr. Nichols' concern, but I really like to stick on Article 20 and whether we, um, and the, the point being, should we raise and appropriate 147500 for the purpose that's set forth in 20, okay? The, the, the fiscal impact notes are our best estimate at the time of, of what the ultimate cost will be. I, I don't think you can say that that's, that's going to be the binding or non-binding language. It's just the best estimate at the time. Now, what happened actually in when it, DRA went to setting the tax rate for, that included Article 16 back in 2014 was they had us raise the full, as I understand it, they had us raise the full amount of $235,000, and then 
they netted out in revenues the full amount of $147,500, which was not, in fact, uh, received. We did not learn until that that was not, in fact, received until after the 2015 town meeting. So there was no way to address that situation. And, uh, and this Article 16 was act is actually non-lapsing until March 31 of 2018. So that article is still in effect, even though the, the contingency at that time uh, was not, in fact, received. The recommendation of DRA of how to address that is reflected in this Article 20. What is actually being raised and appropriated is another 147,500. And uh, that there will presumably be some adjustments at the tax rate setting DRA in its wisdom does have authority to address that in a binding fashion. And so I think uh, the Article 20 as it's currently been amended is more accurate and as is the fiscal impact note. That's our best estimate of what the additional amount is uh, on 2016. All right, thank you. Mr. Rice, on um, Article 20 and whether we should raise an appropriate $147,500 for some culvert work down uh, at the base of High Street. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. For the past two years, I've served on a commission formed by the legislature called the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. Uh, we've, we've spent the last two years looking at three different subjects. One, uh, the risk of damage to the coastline from storm surge. Uh, that's something we see every year. Uh, it's there, it's real. The second issue that we're looking at is sea level rise. That is something that is still subject to a lot of discussion on both sides, and I'm not going to address that at all. Uh, the third one is coastal flooding, and that's the water level that comes down from the other direction, from the sky and from the land to, to uh, our west. Um, we're getting close to putting together the draft of the, of the final report, and a couple pieces of legislation have come out of that already that pertain directly to this. Uh, one is that the DES will require inventories of where we stand on how we protect ourselves from water in whatever form, wherever it comes from, uh, once every five years. There's another provision that is going, that is moving along. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's in the piece of, one of the pieces of legislation this year or not. But it, what it will do is incorporate, if you're going to rebuild something or build something new, there's going to be a little bit different standard for you to comply with in order to make your property safer from any of these hazards. Uh, this falls into the clear category of the flood hazard, the third, uh, the third of them. Um, the Public Works Director made mention of the Mother's Day storm a few years back uh, that just did everything. Uh, everybody thinks back to the uh, storm in uh, uh, 1978 where there was water, water everywhere. And uh, this is what it's supposed to do. We're supposed to provide for uh, accommodating those events in the unlikely chance that they might happen. Uh, so one of the things that you're going to see coming down the road as a result of this commission and the, the laws that go through the legislature is in the, the softest pedal way possible to make people accommodate toward what might, and I emphasize might, be an increasing uh, hazard uh, to the, the town or to facilities. High Street is an important uh, transportation route. It is one of the key uh, arteries off of the beach. It will certainly be addressed in future legislation. And the bottom line of this is if we don't do this now, when we've got it on the agenda, when it's relatively inexpensive to do, we will be required to do it by new state legislation, maybe at a time when we can't afford it or we have other priorities and don't want to spend the money. Then we're going to be between a rock and a hard place. So I would advocate very strongly in favor of just approve this, this measure let the Public Works Director put in an appropriately sized, uh, something that is hydraulically appropriate uh, that will handle whatever water flows are coming through there. It's the whole idea of this. And let's be ahead of the game for once. In Hampton, everybody here knows that we have this habit of putting it off one year and another and another, and then we wonder why the price keeps going up and it takes longer to get it done and it's less effective. So let's for once get ahead of the problem on this and let's not go back to motive or anything else. The reality is we are going to be required to do this, 
to some degree or another, let's get ahead of it so that we can manage it instead of react in a panic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Ms. Latimer. I think when you have a Warren article like this that DRA has to totally rewrite and the moderator has to turn around and ask the town manager what it means, I think that's a pretty good sign that the Warren article itself is a mess. I don't know how you do a study at the same time that you're doing the culvert. Um, this was to take apart the dam that was voted for, to rebuild the dam that was voted for, now to put a culvert in from the dam. And my question is, once you widen that culvert, who are we going to flood out on King's Highway? And I'm not sure any of that's answered or any of this is clear. I will say that we spend half a million dollars a year in administration in this town, and I find this Warren article a mess. I'm not opposed to correcting a default in that culvert, coming to terms with what was voted on for the pond, because people do vote and they have the right to do that, and we have to abide by those votes. But I think that this article is, it has been from the beginning a mess and should go back to the drawing board for clarity and might have to wait another year. Thank you, Ms. Vladimir. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 20? Yes, Mr. Waddell. Quickly, uh, refute a couple of things that have been said. And one would be anybody that drives down uh, High Street, you have the ocean, you have the, you have the pond, and you have the, uh, the marsh. All right, so you've got water all over the place. It floods all the time. 50-year storms, we have 50-year storms much uh, more frequently now than before. I went to a conference in the uh, fall at the Ashworth the National Conference on seawater sea rise, it's tide rising, as Mr. Rice said. And there was a, a very uh, sharp mayor from New Jersey there who had been uh, impacted by Hurricane Sandy. And her whole point was that be proactive, don't be pr reactive. Do things before it happens or else you're going to pay in the end. You're also going to save on insurance, flood insurance for people and stuff if you do it. So I think it's very important to be proactive. And I think people, anybody that's written down there knows there's water all over the place and you need the proper drainage. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Waddell. Not seeing anybody else, we're going to move on to Article 21. Oh, Article 20 is going I to... I asked to be recognized when everybody was through. Okay. You all said, okay. Let's, let's look at, at this with common sense. We have built, like many other communities, all over the place in the marsh and where it's full of water, King's Highway. You have Meadow Pond area, west of King's Highway, uh, over in Bride Hill, which is the western side of town, the development that's going to be taking place west of I-95. Most of Hampton is wet. Number two, public voted to authorize decommissioning the Mill Pond Dam in 2014, predicated partly on the state's uh, offering of a grant, an offsetting grant. The state and other states, and Mr. Jacobs showed uh, pictures of other locations across the United States on Channel 22, uh, countrywide, the the trend is to discontinue dams, especially the small dams, like this one in Hampton. Uh, we voted to decommission it. That was not done. And the replacement of the culvert was predicated upon decommissioning that dam. The following year, in 2015, when we voted to change reverse position and go ahead and reconstruct the Mill Pond Dam, a, there was no valid quote from any engineer. That was a guesstimate from Stevens engineers. And B, there are no grants anywhere in the state of New Hampshire for rebuilding the dams. So we lost the grant. I'm looking at these figures, which are all over the place, and I will say this to you. Do we need to improve the drainage on High Street? Yes. I want to see the drainage on High Street and the culvert done at the same time as we either decommission that dam or rebuild it. We're going to have to do one thing or the other. That's where we're stalling. That's where we're dragging our feet. If the figure comes in really high 
from the engineers, as Mr. Jacobs said in next month or in March, then there's probably going to be a problem for the public finding the extra money because right now there is not enough money to rebuild that dam. So what I say is I want to sit tight. The whole town hasn't washed away yet. We're probably getting close, but it hasn't washed away yet. I'm going to move to have the amount of money requested in this article sit at one dollar. One dollar for money. Give us another year to see if we can pull this together and either rebuild that dam, in which case there will be no grant, but the culvert will be redone, or decommission and redo the culvert at that time. We do half measures all the time around here. If we're going to do the project, we're going to have to do the project in that location. Let's do it right. So I'm going to hand the moderator my amendment to reduce the amount of money requested here to $1 until we can pull our act together and figure out what we're going to do in that location. All right, so we have an amendment uh, to reduce the sum of $147,500 to $1. Is there a second? A second by Mr. Pierce. We've heard from the sponsor of the amendment uh, for her reasons for proposing the amendment. Uh, is there anyone, we've talked a lot about this article, uh, is there anybody who wants to speak to the Woolsey Amendment? Mr. Pierce, do you want to be heard? You were a second on the amendment. Do you want to be heard on the amendment? If I may. Yes. And then Mr. Griffin. I'll make it real brief. I think I expressed my sentiments earlier when I was spoke earlier. We are going to redo the culvert before we decide what to do with the dam, which has a lot of water behind it in theory when it works, or none if we decommission it. So what does that mean about the culvert? This particular culvert, culvert, culvert does not take care of the problem that you have when you go down there almost every other day with the tide being super high, maybe once a week, whatever, the water going across between the condos from one into the meadow pond from the north side. This is further up. It's not the one that floods the road down the middle of that area. They allowed those houses to be built in the middle of the marsh because of some grandfather clause. clause. That's a problem. But the water that most people are familiar with on High Street is not where this culvert is. It's down in the middle of the marsh. The road is lower there, yes. Is, is, does the meadow pond flood? Yes. Is it a problem with this culvert? No. This culvert only takes care of the water coming out from the sluice way from the old gristmill dam. So the argument of flooding on High Street had to be, separate fact from fiction. Part of it is from the tide backing up Meadow Pond across it like that happens because the road is low. It's in a hole, it's in a marsh. All those houses are in a marsh. The road's in a marsh. It's low, so it's going to get flooded. Is that going to be controlled by this culvert? No. Nothing to do with it. I'm firmly in, a, in agreement with this amendment because I don't think we should do anything until we decide what to do with the dam. Get the cart after the horse. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Anyone else wishing to be heard on this Woolsey Amendment to reduce the appropriation to a dollar and essentially come up with a plan? Seeing none, Mr. Griffin. Um, I would just like to speak that um, this is important that things like this be done in order to for the people of Hampton to qualify for reductions in their flood insurance. Hampton has 1,700 uh, people that receive flood insurance, which is the highest in the state of New Hampshire per capita. And I have seen my flood insurance go from $300 to over 4,000 in a very short time, which is much higher than my taxes have gone up. Um, and my house was built in the end of 1800, you know, in about 1895. 
And I've never had it. I've never been flooded except in the storm of 78. And that was because, you know, that was an unusual event. Even today when we have these high water that events that come on a regular basis, I don't have a problem, and many people don't have a problem. But uh, these, th these, these studies and things that are being done and the culverts definitely reflect on everybody that lives on the marsh uh, and does definitely affect things on King's Highway and all of those places. So this is something that's very important, and I think that in order for us to qualify for the different discounts on flood insurance, and I've been to many, many meetings, this is crucial. And that reflects what Fred said, Fred Rice, and also Mr. Waddell. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. So we're going to take a vote on the Woolsey Amendment. Do we want to reduce Article 20 to $1, raise and appropriate the sum of $1, instead of the 147500 that's stated? So if you're in favor of the Woolsey Amendment, please raise your voter card. Down cards. All those opposed? I declare the Woolsey Amendment has been defeated. So we're back to Article 20 as amended by Mr. Waddell. We've talked about it quite a bit. And seeing no further discussion, we're going to move on.